So, Middleton Parish Church is one or two wonderful artefacts that uh, relate to the history of the church. This is a sword brought, brought back from Flodden in 1513 by Sir Richard Ashton, captured from, allegedly, from John Foreman, who was uh, very high up in the Scottish, uh, uh, with the Scottish King James IV even. The spurs, again, are from Sir Richard Ashton, although they may be replacements because two were missing. We've ended up with three. We've never actually had them dated, but they are one, rather wonderful. And they've been lost for a few years, but we found them a while ago. The key is for the priest's vestry, and hopefully later we'll have a look at the priest's vestry. So we're dealing with brass rubbing now. Middleton Church has got, according to the Memorial Brass Society of Great Britain, the best brasses in the north of England. That's quite something. They're only small brasses. We had replicas made a number of years ago and this is one. Let's see what happens when people come to do brass rubbing. This is Sir Ralph Ashton, who was the Major General fighting for Cromwell during the, the Commonwealth. He led the parliamentary forces for the north of England, northwest of England. Let's just reveal a little bit of him here by simply rubbing with these special wax crayons that don't melt in your hand. It would take normally about two hours to do a, a rubbing like this. His face is now showing up rather nicely. And there he is. People come from the societies that are interested in the period of the Civil War. And if this was a cookie program, I'd say, this is one I did earlier. But let's look what can happen. This is being formed into a picture, but that's the sort of result of good brass rubbing. Later we'll see the brasses themselves. This is a, a font cover. This is to, because it's a very important part of the sacraments, the baptism of a child or an adult, this is the font cover that protects the, the font itself. The font used to be both in the tower and it was taken out and put into the, uh, to the aisle, the centre aisle there. And in both cases, it had a cover on it. This is a replacement cover in memory of Elizabeth Horrocks, who died in 1855. When children come, they have great fun or interest when they see this happen. So obviously when the baptism takes place, the rector has access to the water that's in here, which he then blesses and the baptism takes place. Whenever we bring people to Middleton Parish Church or people come because they love, the, they love to learn about the church, we always bring them to this end of the church, the West End, the Tower Arch, and all the Romanesque carvings that you can see. The carvings in the arch, the columns, the wonderful capitals to the columns that are very early Norman, probably about 1100. The great thing about this church is that it covers so many different periods. Almost certainly there was a, a Saxon church here. We're not exactly sure where it would be, but we have a, oval, a churchyard which suggests that there was a Saxon church here. Then we have the Norman church of 1100, probably of one bay this way, three bays this way, with a chancel at that end. Then it would probably have been extended to the north. We have to surmise this as the parish grew. The main thing is that we have this Norman church and Cardinal Langley, when he rebuilt the church in 1412, must have thought it important enough to include this Norman doorway, but he turned it into a Gothic arch to meet the time of that, of that period. The voussoirs and so on are a little bit hiddledy-piddledy because to change it from a rounded Norman arch into the present arch needed a bit of negotiation. But it's still interesting to see how the chevrons were used and the billeting was used and other Romanesque uh, bits of architecture. Also at the other end of the church, above the, the lectern, above the pulpit, 
is more Norman work, it's billeting, and we think that was probably the chancel arch used by Cardinal Langley for the entrance to his uh, chapel to the Blessed Virgin Mary and St Cuthbert. Now this wonderful door, which almost certainly dates from the period of uh, Langley, 1412, we know he's responsible for the porch and majority of the church. This door has stood the test of time, better than modern doors do, I suspect. The wicked, of course, to make it easier than having to open that big door all the time. The porch, which is one of the most wonderful in uh, Lancashire, is sadly deteriorating simply because the stone is gradually falling away from it uh, the pointing was done uh, on, on the walls of this church in cement rather than in uh, lime mortar. And one of the things we're aiming to do at this very moment, if we can get the granting from the HLF, is to actually point it in the lime mortar that it should have been done originally. These poles, which are of great interest to our visitors, there are only six of them, but at one time there would have been eight of them. And these are church wardens' poles. Today, if a bishop comes to the church in full regalia, he's pulled into church and the wardens carry these now and escort him into, down to where he's going to be conducting the service or taking part. But these poles represent really the eight hamlets of the parish of Middleton. That's Great Lever near Bolton, Ainsworth, Ashworth, Bertle and Bamford, Pillsworth, Hopwood, Thornham, and of course Middleton itself. That's why we've got this rather vast church for what was a tiny town at the time, mainly farms, but a very small population. But the overall parish was so big that it needed uh, a church this size to accommodate all the weddings, the funerals and worship. <laughs> 